important development that would be undoubtedly the the development of uh, the, the concept of zero and uh, the zero the number zero as both as a placeholder and as a number in itself and so this was a real leap in in the in the history of mathematics because that uh, revolutionized you know how you represent numbers you can represent huge numbers with only you know a set of finite set of numbers 10 symbols this was you know impossible in the case of the roman or greek uh, uh, notation systems and uh, not just that it also made possible um, the 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 arithmetic operations of addition subtraction multiplication division really easy so uh, so you know these, these things we learn in school the number system we learn in school uh, these operations we learn in school without really understanding how they work and these have remained literally unchanged for across centuries so you can you know see that it's such a fundamental um, development and when you consider these these operations of uh, addition subtraction division multiplication you are automatically led to you know ideas like uh, negative numbers and fractions so the idea of subtraction would lead you to the idea of negative numbers and division would lead to the idea of fractions so even here you know which the rules all the rules we learned in school for, for these kind of numbers they are were developed by hindu hindu mathematicians and brahmagupta in the 7th uh, century ce he explicitly laid down these rules in his Brahma Sutta Siddhanta in a set of uh, verses um, where he, you know, like uh, how negative numbers are to be combined, the, the, you know, the product of two negative numbers, product of one negative and one positive numbers, and division of positive and negative numbers, etc., etc., and how, uh, you know, you, they combine with zero, so equal positive and equal negative, they give you zero, those, uh, those kind of rules. Then also for fractions, he gave all the rules. Uh, then then moving on to um, then the uh, one more subject which we learn in school is or which really f fundamental is that of algebra so without algebra you you can you know it's really impossible to uh, do anything of importance in mathematics so algebra is uh, commonly attributed to al khwarizmi but uh, you know the fact is that it was developed in the hindu civilization it's it was the mathematics of aryabhata brahmagupta which uh, made its way to the Arab world and al Rizmi wrote his books uh, based on this knowledge and they got transmitted to Europe. And that's why, you know, people in Europe believe that, you know, these numbers are the Arabic number system and algebra is from, you know, the Arabic world from al Rizmi, which is uh, false because they, they were in fact developed in the Hindu civilization. So algebra, as we saw, is called Vija Ganita or Avyakta Ganita. And uh, you have, uh, yeah, so I spoke about it some some point back. So one of the things I would just like to mention here is that today we use the symbol X. So in Hindu algebra, they use the symbol Ya uh, for uh, X, <laughs> you know, like the Ya was the short form for Yavat Tavat or the quantity which is to be found. And they would also use the letters of the, you know, the, the Sanskrit alphabet or color names, uh, initials of those, the color names. Um, so, and then there were some very advanced ideas like the Kuttaka algorithm or the Chakravala algorithm in uh, in Hindu mathematicians like Bhaskara to Jish and uh, Jayadeva. So these ideas were developed in Europe centuries later in the 17th century or so. Then <clears throat> and another interest, very important subject that we learn in school is that of uh, trigonometry. Trigonometry also plays a huge role in all branches of science and engineering. Uh, so, so here also, uh, we can, uh, the the basic concept of trigonometry, the, fun the functions of sine and cosine, which we all learned, they were exclusively uh, Hindu inventions. Because uh, when you consider the sine function, it is not the chord but the half chord. The half chord was the, you know, Hindu innovation, um, which becomes the modern sine function. And you have correspondingly, you have the cosine function. And the interesting thing is that even the words more sinus, sine and cosine, the modern words for these functions, they uh, they come from the Sanskrit words from these. So the word for sine in Sanskrit was jya and the word for cosine was kotijya. So actually it's the, you know, the radius of the circle times r, which is jya and the radius of the circle times, uh, so the radius of the circle times sine, which is the jya and the radius of the circle times cosine, which is the kotijya. So it's, it's just a matter of convention. So Apart from that, the modern sine is the same as the jya in Sanskrit and the cosine is, is the same as kotijya. So when the Sanskrit works were uh, translated into Arabic, uh, the word for jya was translated as jaib and jaib in uh, Arabic means gulf or a bay. So uh, and then when these Arabic works were translated into Latin, the, the word jaib was literally trans translated into the Latin word for bay, which is sinus. And so the 
geo becomes a modern sign and cotija becomes a cosine and in trigonometry also you know you have all these um, important relations we learn in school uh, for example the, the the sign of the sum of two angles or things like you know what happens to the sine and cosine functions in the four quadrants of the circle how how their signs sign changes plus minus etc so these were all um, developed by the uh, hindu mathematicians so i give an example here this is the formula for sine of a plus b which is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b so this was given for example by bhaskara too in his uh, siddhanta shiromani you know in the in the 12th century so yeah here is a sanskrit verse for uh, for this uh, result and the the english translation for that so then moving on to you know the next subject of uh, that is that plays a huge role in subjects like statistics computer science is a subject of combinatorics you, you per, per, permutations and combinations given n objects in how many ways can you choose r objects how many ways can you you know find permutations of r objects things like that so the the formula for the combinations r combinations from n objects was given by mahavira in the 9th century ce from mysore so he he gives this formula explicitly in the form of this uh, sanskrit verse so uh, ganita sara sangraha this in his uh, sans- uh, work mathematical work gives this and the other um, results for combinatorics uh, are known to other hindu mathematicians and bhaskara too he um, he summarizes them in his leelavati um, i think in the chapter anka pasha if i remember correctly but uh, there he summarizes all the results for permutations combinations um, in this chapter and then we move on to then another subject which is also uh, really um, play, played a huge role in the in europe only after you know it got acquainted with this subject from indian indologists who translated sanskrit works are those of are, are that of is, is that of linguistics so linguistics is the study of uh, language and grammar and uh, panini is the most well known uh, indian uh, hindu linguist he lived in about the 5th century ce and he uh, he wrote his uh, very uh, seminal work um, ashtadhyayi literally means eight chapters so in this he gives rules about 4000 in 4000 in number where uh, you can you, you can create any meaningful phrase or sentence from uh, by combi- combining certain words so uh, this is this was this played a huge role in the development of linguistics in the west and uh, and yeah so and uh, many of his algorithms uh, are like for cre- for creating these uh, sentences are recursive and iterative in nature much in the spirit of you know how modern computer algorithms are um, are created and his works uh, had a huge influence on on modern day linguists like leonard bloomfield uh, then noam chomsky their works have deep relations to his works so i have given references also to these uh, things in my book for, for more details the more details can be found there uh, fascinating closely associated with linguistics is the subject of uh, prosody so linguistics is a study of language so language uh, in language uh, you have you know the, uh, in, in its artistic form you have uh, poetry and poetry is um, is written in certain meters uh, with with accents on certain syllables and certain number of you know like yeah rhythms rhythms and meters you know so so in the study of prosody is like you know the study of these meters in sanskrit this would be called um, chanda so you, you have this gayatri chanda and uh, anushtup chanda and so many other chandas so the most well known of the prosodists is uh, pingala also uh, around the 5th century bc uh, about contemporary to panini and his most important work was the chanda sutra where he uh, you know so the most well known aspects of this is the development of the meru prastara the meru prastara is today known as the pascal triangle although pascal lived you know centuries after uh, after pingala's time mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, this this is a very fascinating uh, kind of you know construction with many interesting mathematical properties uh, binomial coefficients and uh, things like that and uh, um, and then and his uh, another very uh, you know yeah less well less well known but really uh, a very important cont- uh, development is the development of the um, binary number system and the conversion of uh, numbers from the conventional or decimal number system to the binary number system and vice versa mm-hmm. so he did that for keeping track of the index of poetic meters and um, 
So, so the exact algorithms of how he did that, etc., are also I've also described them in my book with with illustrated examples on how it is to be done. Then the work of prosodists is um, is taken forward again by a later day uh, prosodist Jain, especially the Jain prosodists played a huge role in this. Uh, um, like uh, yeah, Halayudha, Virahanka. So in their works, uh, sometime in the 9th to the um, 11th century CE, they, uh, they, 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 they they described you know what is today known as the Fibonacci sequence. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to keep track of the of the different uh, numbers of poetic meters with uh, with a given number of time units. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so if you, for example, if you have just one time unit, you have just one possibility. If you have two time units, you will have two possibilities, like one short, uh, one long, and two short. If you have three time units, you can have three possibilities. So, like you know, one long, uh, uh, one short, and one short, one long, or three short, something like that. You know, and if you keep track of these num- numbers, these numbers of combinations, you get one, two, three. Uh, five, eight, and so on. So this would be the so-called uh, Fibonacci sequence in which each number is obtained by the sum, sum of the previous two numbers. And this is also explicitly written uh, in, in in their works. So all this was, you know, much before uh, Fibonacci lived, uh, was born even. So these numbers are un- nonetheless called Fibonacci numbers, even though they should be called Virahanka or Hemachandra numbers. So, yeah. Uh, the then I would uh, then f- finally I will talk about uh, uh, the subject of uh, calculus, which ha- which is as I mentioned one of the most important subjects in mathematics. It combines literally you know everything that we learn in mathematics in school and uh, yeah, and uh, talks about things like infinitesimals and um, yeah limits and those kind of things which we learn in school today. So and and we we uh, we kind of learn in school that this this subject was developed in the West by Newton and Leibniz almost single handedly and then uh, there was this you know yeah feud between them and all those things we hear and it somehow it gives us the impression that it magically pops up in Europe out of nowhere this subject of calculus and uh, so this is really a very mysterious occurrence. But if you look at it, the development of this subject in the Hindu civilization, you see that it, it has a large, a long history going all the way at least to the times of Aryabhata. So Aryabhata gave us a set of uh, sign tables of, in, in, in terms of second order differences of the sign tables. And this is a really fascinating work, uh, so uh, fascinating result. So again, I've discussed this in detail in my book, how it um, incorporates two um, results of calculus, the so-called a uh, second derivative of the sign is proportional to the sign itself he uses the discrete version of this fact and that um, the so called fundamental theorem of, of calculus so it's like this verse has a double meaning and you can check out my book how you know the same verse you know encodes both the results then uh, you have after aryabhata you know since the hindu astronomers were interested in you know getting better and better uh, trigonometric values um, for their astronomical observations you know they created different interpolation uh, for- formulas they, uh, they they improved the uh, value of the number pi, and uh, and so this 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 was a continuous development, and this culminated in the development of the infinite series by by Madhava from the 14th century onwards, and his disciples in Kerala. So um, so for example, um, some of the results, some of the main results are just tip of the iceberg. This would be the so-called uh, you know Taylor series for sine and cosine functions. So you know like for the sine function, sine x is equal to x minus x cubed by three factorial plus x five by five factorial, etc. And uh, a corresponding formula for the cosine function. So this was uh, discovered in the, about the 14th century by Madhava, and Taylor was uh, discovered them uh, in 1715. Then you have the, the the infinite series expansion for the, the tan inverse function, which is today known as the Gregory series, mm-hmm. who discovered them in the 17th century, but Madhava discovered them in the in 14th century for in the inverse tan sine inverse tan function. And then you have the uh, series expansion for uh, for pi by four, which is today known as the Leibniz series. But again, this was done by Madhava in the 14th century. And one more thing I forgot to also I forgot to mention was that in Bhaskara too, in the, in the 12th century, he also gave formula for the area uh, of a sphere, surface area of a sphere, and volume of a sphere. So, and um, he gave he did not give the entire derivation for that. He stated the result with an indication of why it would work, but the explicit proof in, uh, is uh, in terms of you know 
uh, yeah, the, all the mathematical technicalities were given by the Kerala uh, mathematicians, um, starting from the works of the Madhava and so on. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit cittinet Dhanyavad. Namaskar.